anyway, he was given this thorn in the flesh. And if you look at the Greek, what the thorn means, the thorn actually is a sharp, painful object. But did you know the thorn also represented a sharp stake that they would put the enemy's heads on after it was decapitated? Okay, this thorn in the flesh was given to Paul by the devil. It was not God. I don't know how the man could have had uh, any pride in his his life anyway, to y'all with everything that he went through. But he was given this by the enemy to buffet him. So some believe it was a spirit uh, or lingering illness. Some feel like it was a handicap because he had, uh, he, he wrote large, and they thought maybe something was wrong with his eyes. And maybe some of you feel like you've got a handicap that is keeping you from fulfilling the call of God on your life. And it may not be a physical handicap, but it may be a rebellious teenager. It may be marriage problems, financial problems. What's buffeting you? Pounding. You get that child, you think you're raising them right, and then they're driving you bananas. What do you mean? You was raised in church. Y'all have never been there before? (laughs) Still dealing with it. So whatever your weakness is that you think is weak, it may be an addiction that you've got or that you had. It may be uh, a divorce that you've been through. Or whatever you're going through, God can use the messes of your life to make a message. Because somebody needs to know what you've been through and that you made it. They say, man, if that sister can make it, if that brother can make it, hey, I have hope. And Jesus is the only answer we have. So whatever you're going through that you think is a weakness when the enemy will tell you, oh, you can't be used by God. You're not bold. You're not educated enough. Oh, you can't. That's a lie of the enemy. Some of you need to to put those thoughts down and know who God says you are, that you are mighty men and mighty women of God. And you take authority over Satan when he starts putting those lies in your mind and say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I'm called by God. I'm anointed by God. I'm appointed by God. And put the devil under your feet. Well, let's see. Let's go on to another thorn in the flesh. Certain groups of people. Woo. But anyway, what happened to him, his influence was spreading. He was speaking to kings and royalty and governors. And boy, he was just spreading the gospel everywhere. Well, this just made the enemy so mad, he sent groups of people that tried to destroy Paul. And one of these was Alexander the silversmith. Now, Alexander the silversmith made idols in the temple for Diana. So when Paul came through preaching the gospel, guess what? It messed with his livelihood. They didn't need idols anymore. So what they wanted to do was to take him out. We're going to take you out. And that was a group that he had to deal with because the the gospel was spreading. And I can tell you today in America, the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money. It takes money to preach the gospel. It takes money to live. But when the money has us and we do things we're not supposed to do, that is a problem in the body of Christ. And it is destroying marriages because what happens today, young people are getting married and they want what their parents have that took them 50 years to get it. (laughs) And what they're doing, they're getting in debt and then all that does is lead to stress. They want what they want as long as they got a credit card. And it's destroying. It's destroying families. It's destroying marriages. It's destroying our country. And it's destroying churches. 
Because the root is the love of money. We need a bailout in this country, don't we? And you know, the thing is, anything that we put before Jesus becomes an idol in our lives. And whatever it is, now I know this isn't the weekend to talk about the football. Because I believe in football and sports and basketball and I played sports and I grew up in religious bondage that says if it's fun, don't do it. Like, don't go to ball games, it's a sin. Don't go to a movie, it's a sin. Blah, blah, you know. So that's not what I'm saying. But it is a shame when stadiums are filled today, but churches are empty. It's a shame that people can go to football games, high school football games, but they can't come to church on Sunday. It's a shame that stores are filled with people, but churches are empty. But I tell you, there's an awakening that's taking place and the church better get alive because God's building an army and it's not a weak army, it's a strong army. And the wind of the Holy Spirit's gonna throw some people off the fence because you gotta get in, get out, or get run over because his church is gonna be powerful and mighty. And Jesus is gonna be number one in our lives. No matter what we're going through, we trust Jesus. So they were trying to destroy him because it affected their livelihood. And do you know whatever we're bound to, somebody's making money off our bondage and they don't want you free? And I think one of the greatest examples as a registered dietitian, y'all can say she can preach it, is the bondage to sugar. Y'all would have never dreamed that. Y'all were thinking, "Uh uh-huh, cigarettes, alcohol. Sugar. Do you know there are marketing companies that they put cereal at the aisle where children can see and want, I want that one. Because they know if they can get us hooked on sugar because it's addictive, sugar causes inflammation, which causes sickness in our body, which leads to medicine, which is a money-making business. And they would rather see us bound because everything has sugar in it now. You can't get away from it. Because they'll want more. Who can eat just one piece of chocolate? Y'all are the holiest group I've ever seen. (laughs) Doug and I found some Snickers in the freezer. Those things are probably three years old. We ate the whole bag of them. I thought... (laughs) He said, does it taste okay? I said, well, put them in the microwave. First time I I took a bite, it was so hard, it like to broke a tooth. I said, put it in the microwave. I said, you know, it's not bad. (laughs) So I'm preaching to the choir here today. But whatever you're bound to, somebody wants to make money off your bondage and they'd rather see you bound than set free because it affects their livelihood. Well, the next thing was people inside of the church. Well, see what had happened is some false prophets had come to town, some false teachers, and they were discrediting Paul. And what had happened is that Paul was a tent maker. He didn't receive any money from them. And he had to defend himself all the time of, I'm here to spread the gospel for you. But see, these these false teachers were coming in and they were having to pay them a large amount of money. And they thought because, hey, we're charging, they're charging so much, they must be more anointed than you. And I'm afraid we are getting to that point sometimes in ministry that the larger church, which we want to large churches, there's nothing wrong with it, you know, they got to uh, drive certain kind of vehicles. You know, if you're not successful. Doug and I have been, we drove a minivan for probably 10 years, and I don't have a problem with it. It gets me there. But the problem is we're trying to teach like everybody else. We're trying to feel like we got to drive a certain kind of vehicle to be successful, and it's gotten in the church, or the greater the anointing is. Hey, let me tell you, you are called to do what God called you to do, and you're just as anointed as anybody else. Amen? Amen. And some of you are spending too much time defending what God has called you to do. It wasn't a conference call. 
They're not going to understand what God called you to do. It's between you and God. And they will try to discredit you. They will try to talk about you. There's nothing worse than a religious spirit telling you how holy they are and how weak you are. God's called you with your anointing to be you. He's called you to be you. But he was always defending himself. So many of you are trying to defend what God's called you to do. I know when I started, you know, I had to explain to everybody, I'm not building a church. I'm not called a church. I'm called to bring the body of Christ together. And they all just left me. Because it's okay. You're doing something different. When you do something different, people don't understand. And I even had a, a friend I'll never forget. She said, well, if it's of God, it'll work. If not, it won't. I thought, well, I know that. I need somebody to pray and hold my arms up and believe with me, okay? But you know the thing, we had to learn it from the ground up. We had to learn to do everything. And some of you are wearing yourself out because you're doing everything at your church, but you hang in there. God will send you divine connections if you won't give up. Because I can tell you, he continues to send divine connections. All of you that are here, our team, divine connections for such a time as this, for kingdom builders. But I couldn't say that, you know, I had a church split with a thousand people to, to follow me. No. Nobody. Just Doug and I and our two sons who didn't want to be there. <laughs> They were teenagers. They did not want to come to a conference on Saturday. And plus, I made them wear suits, y'all. <laughs> but they did it. That's why they moved so far away from me. <laughs> Seriously, but, you know, sometimes you got to learn the ropes yourself. Because that way nobody can come in and say it can't be done. Because you can say, oh, yes, it can. We've done it. We've done it. And it's only God and his grace and his mercy. But he spent most, Paul spent so much time solving people problems. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? If you've been in church any amount of time in ministry, you know what I'm talking about. I really believe there, the Lord sends people in your life to polish you to be good and to have what he wants you to do. But I believe he uses good people to distract you, to discourage you, that you'll just, you know, and they don't even realize it, but they're buffeting you. Some people's like little chihuahua puppies. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you what's going on. <laughs> I'm like, wear you down, make you physically ill. So you need discernment. But I want you to know that the Lord is fighting your battle. The Lord is fighting your battle. So sometimes I don't think Paul had just one thorn. I think it was a whole bush. And some of y'all think the same thing right now while well, I've had every one of those little thorns you're talking about today. But you don't quit. You don't get discouraged. You know that this too shall pass no matter what you're going through. When you're going through the storms of life, if you'll hang on to Jesus, the rain will stop, the rainbow will come out, and the sun will come out again. So some of you are going through some storms right now, but you need to take your eyes off the thorns. Take your eyes off of those things that are distracting you. You know, the enemy knows our weaknesses. Hey, we're not tempted to rob a bank, but he knows our weakness. And he's going to do everything he can to shut you down, to get you discouraged, to make you mad. Have you ever tried to pray when you're mad? I guess y'all never get mad. It's hard. Jesus, help me. And then all you're thinking about, ooh, I could tell that person off in a professional kind of way right now. 
Oh, I could tell them off. Lord, don't put them in front of me at Walmart today. <laughs> Just let me say something, Lord. He's saying, zip it, zip it, zip it. So no matter what you're going through, you're going to make it through. Because see, the storms in life makes you stronger. The storms of life make you stronger. The times that you're all alone, you know, when we started and we felt like we were so alone, was some of the best times because why? It gets you on your knees. You get on your knees more when you're going through the storms than when everything is going right in your life. It's easy to praise the Lord when your children's not driving you crazy or your husband. It's easy to praise the Lord when you're not physically ill in your body. It's easy to have faith for everybody else. Oh, I'm praying for you, sister. I'm praying for you, brother. But how are you doing in the storms of life when you're physically ill? It's easy to have faith for other people. But people are watching you in your storm. And we are living in a time now of storm in the land. And it's time for the church to rise up and have peace and not be bound by fear. Yeah. That is keeping us from serving God. We're not supposed to be bound by fear. Right. Power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. Power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. But we're allowing fear, the idol of fear. The idol of fear would destroy you. The idol of fear will, will lead to anxiety in your life, which will lead to depression when you'll feel like you're in a pit that you can't get out of. But it's, you got to get to the point that, hey, this pit's not it. I'm tired of being in this pit. Have you ever tried to pull somebody out of the pit that wasn't ready to come out of the pit? Come on, sister. Come on, brother. No, just a little bit longer in this pit. You can't help people that don't want to be helped. Only Jesus can help them. You pray for them, you believe with them, but don't let them wear you down. God's got something special for you and you got to have all the strength you can. You got to have healing in your body. You got to have freedom. You got, you know, we could be spiritual all day long and have spiritual, but if we don't have the physical health to do it. So you better believe the enemy's working overtime. That's why many of you have got a gift of healing that you didn't even know you had because of what you're going through. Many of you got a, 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 heal, a deliverance ministry that you didn't even know you had from what you've been through. Your weakness can turn into somebody else's strength. So have you ever wondered why a rose is such a beautiful flower, but it has to have thorns on it? Have y'all ever been stuck with a thorn on a rose bush? When I was a chubby little girl growing up in the country, we didn't have much to do, so I thought I'd jump over a rose bush one day. Guess what? It didn't happen. I was trying to get in shape. And I was, I had scratches all over me. I told you I tell y'all too much, but y'all are thinking about your childhood doing the same thing. Lesson learned, don't jump a rose bush. But to get to that beautiful rose, sometimes you get pricked. And that's like living for Jesus. Living for Jesus is a beautiful life. Freedom belongs to us. And we're going to be happy in heaven one day. But right now, he wants us to enjoy the journey and take people to heaven with us. It's not all about us. We're living in a time now, it's all about me. What I want, what I want to do, it's about him and obeying him and taking people to Jesus. And he'll use your talent. He can use this old country girl to minister to people. They probably don't hardly understand what I'm saying, but they call for prayer. <laughs> because you know what? They can feel anointing through the television. So you just got to do what God's called you to do. But anyway, to get to that rose, you got to be pricked. Living for Jesus is beauty, but sometimes you get pricked by circumstances of life. But it's going to be so worth it. 
See, you don't see the worth it when you're going through it. But you hang in there. God's not finished with you. Maybe you're watching by television. God's not finished with you. Maybe you've been given a bad diagnosis by the doctor, and I believe in doctors and medicine, and I thank God for all of it. But the Lord has the final authority, and he is the great physician. So we're just going to cry out to him today and believe this is going to be a day of miracle signs and wonders here and for you watching by television. Because why? That's what Jesus does. You know, the only way we're going to have revival in the land is when we welcome the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people are welcome the Holy Spirit, but leave your gifts at home. We need the gifts of the Spirit in operation like never before. If anybody needs healing, what do they say? Call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil. Are we anointing with oil anymore? Are we believing what the Word says? Or do we pick and choose what makes us comfortable and, and draws a crowd? Boy, I'm just getting all over the place. Lord, y'all say, Lord, help her. But we're given a time now, a great opportunity to win people to Jesus. And I believe we're going to see more miracles. Because see, that when Jesus performed the miracles in the Bible, it, people were saved. When they see the miracles in your life, it's going to bring people to Jesus. But you've got to share what Jesus has done with you to those hurting people. So no matter what you're going through, I want you to believe Say, God's not finished with me. And he's got great plans for you. Do y'all receive this word? I pray this message blessed you. And some of you, this brought a greater revelation of things that you're going through because you're a threat to Satan. Because some of you feel like you, as we use the word buffet, enemy is buffeting you. If it's not sickness, it's family problems, it's, uh, I mean, your health, your marriage. I mean, if it's not one thing, it's something else because he wants you to quit. He wants you to be discouraged. But I can tell you, the Lord's grace is sufficient for you. You're too close to your breakthrough. You're too close to your miracle. Now's not the time for you to give up and quit. Now, if you're watching this program and you say, I have a lingering illness or, or a handicap or any of the things that I went through, in this teaching, I want to pray with you now. Lord, I lift up everyone that is watching this program. Lord, you know the situations that they are dealing with. Those that have a broken heart, those that have physical illness in their body, those that have bondages and addictions, those that are having family issues or marriage issues, we could go on and on. Lord, you know the hurt. You see their hurt. You see the pain. So, Lord, I just pray right now that you wrap your arms around those people and set them free. Give them your love. Give them your peace, Holy Spirit. Let them know that you're fighting this battle for them. In the mighty name of Jesus. I believe the Lord touched you and send us praise reports. I can't wait to see what God has done in your life through this message today. Now, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, that is the most important decision you'll ever make. Hey, you'll go through storms, and yes, you will have some thorns in your flesh sometimes. But the good news is you'll never face these situations alone. The Holy Spirit will be with you, leading you, guiding you. When you're tired, he will pick you up and encourage you to never give up. So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, maybe you know religion, but you don't know Jesus. You went to church every week. Maybe you go to church every week now. But you know you don't have a relationship with Jesus. If that's you, we do have a 1-800 number. Call that number, and if we don't pick up right away, we'll call you back because we want to lead you to Jesus. Or some of you may just need to rededicate your life to the Lord. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we pray for you every day. Television is expensive, and we could use your help because this world needs Jesus. The only hope we have is, I've said plenty of times, Jesus or Jesus. And they're looking for hope, and we give them Jesus. And if, that, if you could help us, we would really appreciate that. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. Don't you miss it. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus.
is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Many of you that are watching this broadcast, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. You've got some impossible situations, but I got some good news. You have hope in Jesus because we still serve a supernatural miracle working God of now. I also would like to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. It would make our day to have you as our guest. If you think our broadcast is powerful, wait and come and experience the presence of the Lord. You'll love it. Also, I want to thank our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we thank you for helping us spread Jesus to a hurting world. God bless you all.